Welcome to A Word From The Wise, the Soul Wise podcast. We come to you the beginning of each month where we talk about products that we do, uh, news in the industry and uh, just anything that we think you might be interested in. You can hear us on Spotify, Amazon Music, we can be seen on video on YouTube uh, or just find us wherever you normally get your podcasts from. So welcome to this month's podcast. We've uh, missed a couple of months because uh, people's holidays and COVID hit soul wise. So we've been a bit short staffed. So we've uh, had a couple of months of not doing anything. Uh, since the last podcast, we've had Pointing come to visit and interspersed into this episode, we will have the interview with Andre, who's the chief over at Pointing, started it all those years ago. Um, but what we're going to talk mainly about today is marine antennas and in particular I guess pointing because whilst we do antennas from lots of places the marine mm. ones are all pointing aren't they? Yeah. So really what would you say <clears throat> determines a, a marine antenna? Well state? pointing gone berserk on marine antennas it's the new thing isn't it? Uh, basically sorry uh, the main thing is it's got to be waterproof yeah. Uh, which means it's got to be IP60 or IP69. And what um, does that mean? So IP, um, that's a, a rating, isn't IP, it? IP, uh, yeah, uh, rating. I think the first one is dust and the second number is water. I think eight means you can throw it in a swimming pool for six feet and it still works. I think nine means you can throw it in an even deeper swimming pool and it still works. And they've also got this new rating, IP69K as well, which makes it even more Yeah, swish. I think that means it can be hit with steam doesn't it yeah uh, that's right yeah you yeah. can uh, you can hit that with steam washing that sort yeah. of thing because the kit we've predominantly done has been ip65 hasn't it so yeah they, that shows how much better these of, are you know stick it on the side of a house or something like light shower type stuff yeah. so 68 69 is the but it's not just that you also need to think about the uh, materials used yeah um obviously metal parts that sort of thing you really need to have a good quality stainless steel for that yeah. not some cheap chromium plated stuff or stainless steel or uh, mild steel stuff that's just going to fall apart after 12 months so um that's the main difference the quality of the construction and we've been um, used to good quality from pointing anyway haven't we don't we? seem so to get any issues with quality i can't remember the last time we had a dodgy antenna back from pointing to be honest so the marine antennas i'm thinking with them being on water is there a better type antenna that people should be having the omni or the directional with well you can't really go for a directional yeah. uh because you don't know which way the boat's going to be pointing indeed well, so yes. it's pointing that way the directional is in the wrong direction so um you can use directionals but on a canal boat maybe um, yeah <laughs> but every time you moor up you'd have to be aiming it for wherever the mast is and that sort yeah. of thing so really you need to be thinking about an omni and um when it comes to the Omnis, you need to be thinking about one which is not necessarily super high gain. Right. Because the signal from the Omni is coming out as a donut shape yep. from the thing. And if you go for really high gain, that means you've got a very squished donut. Um, now that's fine when the antenna isn't rocking about on a boat. Yeah. But if it's rocking about on a boat, you can imagine that disc of antenna is swinging up and down and up and down and up and down all the time, which means it's making and breaking contact with the remote mast. Yeah. So you need to go for an antenna which is not super high gain, uh, an Omni, and it needs to be a clean Omni. I just said it needs to be a donut shape. Well, you can get some cheap and cheerful antennas where the donut is more sort of a, a jagged, spiky thing sticking out, Yeah. in which case you're not going to get a... Uh, consistent beam pattern coming So you need outside. to look at radiation patterns in spec sheets yeah. for this type but, of And obviously all the um, antenna products are very keen on having this nice clean beam yeah. without lots of jagged spikes all over the place. So uh, good antenna. Yeah, so low gain with good beam patterns. Yes. Sounds good. Lowish gain. So where does the idea of CISO and cross polarised well, fit in? Generally, we would say go for a cross polarized. Right. So the, the you get the standard 4G LTE is a two stream service. So you need two aerials. That's standard 4G. You can get higher country with a 4G than anymore. You need more aerials, but the common one uses two aerials. And uh, the signals leave the mast orientated one particular direction. Let's assume that they're both waves going up and down, up and down, up and down. So waves are going up and down. 
every time they hit something, the waves go, oh, twist. Right. Oh, no longer that way. Oh, I'm going to go that way. Um, so when these signals come to the uh, be received by the antenna, they're no longer doing that. They might be doing that. Or who knows what they're doing. So uh, usually a cross polarised, where the antennas are arranged in a cross pattern, can be better because that way you're covering two polarizations equally right. for the signal. Yeah. If you're going across water, one assumes that you're not going to be hitting a building that's in the way. Well, yes, that's, you'd like so, to think not anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, well, yeah, icebergs, whatever, yeah. you know, Titanic. So one assumes that the uh, the beam is, when you receive it at the bow, it's still going to be doing that, going up and down, up going and up down. and down. Yeah. Um, so in that case, going for a, um, instead of going for a cross polarised, you might want to go for one which actually looks at bow streams vertically polarised. Right. With waves going up and down. Uh, in which case, you need a different way of discriminating between the signals. So you need to put CISO antenna, single in, single out antenna, yeah. but with a gap between them. Yeah. So they're able to pick up the two streams coming from them. And how far should that gap be? Um, there is a table on Pointing's website, but typically two feet, something like that. Well, if it helps, uh, when we did our a Pointing course, he said 65 centimetres. That's about two feet, yeah. yeah. So yeah. about, about so, two foot apart. Yeah. They've actually got a website, um, a table on their website, which actually shows you how far they're about to be. So usually it's better to go for two CISO antennas uh, with a bit of separation yeah. um, on a boat and also they're better able to cope with the uh, with the rocking of the boat yeah. and keeping that, that nice. And boats are kind of designed for that sort of thing anyway when you think about it. If you want to keep stuff symmetrical, having one one side and one the other side works anyway. All the pictures we get sent from customers are all like that, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. What about things like the Pucks and Mimos, are they any good? Um, well, certainly for inshore use, Yeah. Um, where yet again, you may be thinking of a cross polarised anyway, because the signal's going to be coming from, I don't know, some place by the marina, or some place by the canal or something like that. So going for a cross polarised would probably be a good idea rather than two CISOs. There's no hard and fast rule, but probably a cross polarised would be a good idea. But the main thing with uh, inshore boats is you need to think about packaging. Yeah. People don't usually want a dirty and stand stuck up in the air on their boat. And certainly if you're going on canal boats, because we have had that before, haven't we? Yeah, people have said. Or certainly if they've bought an ex-pole one yeah. and they've said, do you yeah. do spare yeah. um, houses because they them. Yeah. smashed into a bridge come off. Them off yeah. or something like that. <laughs> So uh, that's that's where the puck comes in. So the puck is is uh, can be categorised as marine because it's it's got the appropriate waterproofness and yep. construction that sort of thing. Um, but um, as the name denotes, it's only a slim, small antenna, the size of a of a, of a puck, yeah. you know, a, a hockey puck. Um, but it is very much suited for things like canal boats and that sort of thing because yeah. of its low profile. Uh, and at a push, the MIMO 3, you could do the same sort of thing. MIMO it's a bit, three, it's a bit higher. But... It's a bit higher. It's a better quality antenna. Yeah. Um, it will give you a better spread um, across the whole frequency range. So it's got a nice uh, flatter uh, uh, frequency gain response across the whole range. So it will be a better antenna. Um, but both those antennas probably not good for offshore. No. Uh, because of the compromises in the housing so you've got limited gain and capabilities and that sort of thing and i suppose it's worth noting that those actually the puck and the mimos are what a lot of the caravan and motorhome people yeah, use as well aren't they because so, it, it's so sort of thing, boats you know you as well, either it's, a, it's caravan thing, on a, uh, stuck on yeah on a, on a canal. you can permanently mount them whereas if you've got an expole one for instance you wouldn't generally leave that outside no, would you no no so. no so what about the, uh, we do the 402 and the 493, they're the CISO ones, aren't they? The long, uh, the long thick ones. 493 is a CISO. Yeah. Uh, so that's got the single antenna coming out. Some people are not keen on that because it does mean they have to mount two antennas. Yeah. And the thing about the, uh, sorry, what's the model number, the 493. Yeah. The 493 uses the uh, one inch marine mount in the bottom. Right which is one of those extremely expensive high-grade center steel things that you can fix to bulkheads and that sort of thing. Um, but it is a CISO antenna, but some people nicely aren't keen on the mounting of that because they do have to mount two antennas. It'll give them the optimum 
results having two antennas split apart but some people want more of a convenience attitude yeah. in which case you go for something like the 402 which is a MIMO so that's got uh, I think it's a that's got two Omnis um, in the same housing right um, now if you think about it that means that the Omnis are quite close to each other yeah which means they're not good not as good at giving the uh, the separation required for the two streams yeah. Uh, but it does have a convenience factor, and I think probably a 402 is probably cheaper than two 493s as well. So... Yeah, but if you're looking at big ships, the cost is kind of irrelevant, isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean, I know everyone's got to think about the cost, but yeah. if you've got a, a you know, a few million quid's worth of boat out there... Yeah, you know, depends what... what sort of boat it is, I suppose. Yeah. Well, the, the 493, we, we just did recently to the uh, that charity boat that's the library that goes from country to country, helping right. to educate the kids, so... Oh, yeah. Um, hopefully we should have some good pictures yeah. back from and that. It's working, so. Yeah, I like well, it. That's all right. Yeah. That's good. I'm not going to put a case study on where it don't work. Yeah. No. So, I guess leading on talking of fancy boats, that leads us on to the the new fancy antennas. Yes. Right? So you've got the <clears throat> narwhals, which are the 900s, and then the new wave hunter. Yes, um, the beast. The beast. The yeah. beast. And those are so obviously they're omnis as well, but. Well, what What's they, so good about them? Well, then? what they've done for the uh, for the 900 series is um, they've upped the materials used. Mm. So they've gone for best everything, which you can tell by the price, price absolutely. Space. But also, and they're big though, aren't they? They're big. Those so, 900s are taller than me. Well, what they've done is uh, rather than having um, the two, uh, see so the 902, for example, is a two by two Mimo. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you could consider it's like the uh, the 402. Yeah. But instead of the two Omnis being that. They stacked them on top of each other. Right, so, so rather that than way, next to each other on yeah, top. So they've got yeah. a much better separation between them. Yeah. Um, it does mean the antenna is absolutely huge. I can't oh, remember absolutely. what a Nero 2 is. It's something like six foot or something well, like that. Well, certainly yeah. taller than me, yeah. yeah. Yeah, There is a picture on our socials if anyone's interested. Yeah, yes. So, <laughs> um, um, expensive, but as you say, if you've got a multi-million pound boat, then then what the hell, it's what you do, isn't it? Well, and I guess if you've got a multi-million pound boat and you're out at sea, you're not going to be able to get into all the marinas, so you're going to need something higher quality anyway to, yeah. to get in, yeah. to Just get the signal don't go across. under a bridge or something like that. Well, I don't think there's many bridges in the oceans, is there? No, that's right. Well, what about the Wave Hunter then? I mean, that's, Hunter, yes. that's awesome. It's so big it comes on a pallet on its own. It comes on a pallet. Um, obviously, big expensive boat shop is a Wave Hunter. Uh, so it comes in its own huge, great big housing. So what they've done with the Wave Hunter is... Um, I'm going to say this and make sure I've got it right. Inside, normally you would have an Omni antenna. Mm. Um, but there are compromises with Omni antennas. Uh, so the compromise is getting the gain and keeping the beam pattern and that sort of thing. Because as I say, if you increase the gain of an Omni, you flatten the beam, which makes it harder to maintain a good signal with the base on the, on the mainland. So what they've done with the Wave Hunter, they've gone for a sectorised approach. Right. So you've got six high gain, high-ish gain, uh, directional antennas. Yeah. So they've got a narrow beam, but they've got a big vertical beam right okay um but you've got six of them arranged all around the inside so they're all pointing out um and each one i believe is a four by four antenna and does it so does each one connect to a, a separate yes. router so you've got six routers you need in there as well. six routers in there yeah. and, it, and if i remember right there's room for a switch as well isn't there um i did ask about this yesterday and i think the the feeling was um if you were to cram six category 14 that's using four antennas yeah. in the housing you might start to be running out of room right um so i spoke to teltonica about it and they said they would normally envisage that you would have six individual routers yeah um a poe land cable going up for each router yeah and then and then the in, switch may be down on the well you'd need a low balancing router because you've right. got to have something a router that will take all the six inputs yeah and essentially convert them into a single output for distribution within the within the vessel. Right. Okay. So you go for a low balancing router, which can actually balance the uh, the internet stream or the IP stream coming from each router, and uh, equally share it out amongst the clients. And you can't just willy nilly buy this antenna, can you? You can't just say, right, I'll have one of those, please. You have to do a spot of training with it as well. Oh yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're... Jump through some hoops. Well, and... I suppose they don't want to be sending out. I mean, how much are they? 
It's a, it's a lot of money. <laughs> it's certainly five figures, isn't it? I can't remember. I'll write it down for you. I'm sorry, you can tell people. <laughs> I know, I know, but I, I think there are various price levels, aren't there? All oh, right, okay. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You it's, that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of money, but, um, but, but, yeah. but it's a lot of antenna, that's yeah. the thing. Right? And if you've already fought out, I mean, how much some of those, those Russian boats that they're flogging off, how much are they going to sell? Well, absolutely. About? If you've got a 50 million quid boat, yeah, it's kind of 50 million quid, right. that's, that's probably yeah. the fuel just getting into the marina one day. Yeah. So. So, yes. so I think that kind of covers the marine antennas then. I guess if, if anyone's got any questions, they can always pop them in the comments or, yeah, or yeah. pop us an email across. In the interview I did with Andre from Pointing, we talked about the e-points. So thinking about it, would you use them in marine? Um, well, you could do. Uh, would that be more of an inshore? Because I can't remember what the IP rating is on those. Uh, I'll be perfectly around. I don't know what the IP rating is. Certainly for inshore, yeah, they, they should be no problem at all because all yeah. they are is, is actually a housing yeah. into which you can put your put your router. And Because the conversation I had with him was about um, pairing them up with the Teltonica routers. So we were talking about yeah. doing a, a discount code and, and so on with that. So yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll get on with that. As long as they're going to pay for it, yeah. <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Okay. And uh, if anyone's got any questions, please come back to us. Thank you very much. Ta -ra. Hi, everyone in uh, the UK and in Britain and in the rest of Europe. Um, I'm so happy. The first time uh, I've actually met, my name is Andre Kuri, I'm the CEO of Pointing, um, that I've met with SoulWise, who's been distributing our products uh, really for, I think, 10 years Certainly or more. 10 years, I'm sure. Um, yeah. SoulWise at the moment, Sydney is our biggest and uh, uh, distributor in all of the UK and they even distributed some parts of Europe and they're certainly one of the biggest distributors in Europe. So very important and one of the reasons we are so impressed is that Pointing cannot be distributed through used channels. They've got like a very, very good aftercare, um, the technical support, uh, the people they've got here really understand the products. So they choose only a few products. Uh, we often with Teltonica, which is a brand that we very well associated yeah, with absolutely, because it, yeah. it works very well. Your new best friends. <laughs> <laughs> My new best friends. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're doing well and we're doing quite a few things for the sheer coincidence uh, because with Solwise we've gone a long time that you've also chosen Teltonica as quite a leading absolutely. brand. Absolutely. And we've been singing the praises of that as a collaboration for a very long time. So, so somehow it's almost like our, our fates run um, together. Indeed. And, uh, and it's quite good because that leads into the new products this year, the e-points that you brought out can yeah. be used with the Teltonica routers, so the routers. That's, that's been a good... The e-point e product is the one where and instead of the Expo 1 and the Expo 2 that's been so popular as an outdoor antenna, and uh, I think there's lots of explanation, mm. outdoor antennas, if you're going to get fixed internet, fixed wireless, but if you want fixed internet at a home office, you absolutely need to use an outdoor antenna, that we've been saying. Yeah. But with an outdoor antenna, you need uh, two wires, and later it's going to even be four wires, uh, cables, RF cables to go in. They can't be too long. So what we've done is we've made a little pocket. I call it like a kangaroo antenna. We most probably yeah, yeah, give yeah. it the name, the kangaroo, yeah. that can fit uh, the, the router. And then um, what comes out is just the Cat 4 cable, Cat 5, Cat 6, sorry. Whatever Cat cable, it's much easier to route. You can have 40 meters of that, for example. So... That's the one advantage, much more flexible. There's only one cable come out. That's on convenience. Um, but I know I'm a technical person and I don't <laughs> want to bore people. But you get much higher data rates and much better range. The reason for that is the fact that those cables have got losses, especially towards the higher bands. And uh, in fact, the new one with the kangaroo, even though it's got our old antennas in there, for example, if it's got an x 2 in there, the gain is actually then 6 dB higher. Now, 6 dB is four times. Mm -hmm. um, so you lose actually 75% of your signal um, when you're using from indoor to outdoor at, at the higher end frequencies. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it is a marvelous advantage, maybe technical, but to the user, yeah. it means better range, better Definitely. data rate. Yeah, and so. by using the Ethernet cable as the length as opposed to an RF cable, it's so much better for better. people. Yeah. And Louise has promised me, because we believe you can't just buy that uh, antenna and it's already been uh, very well tested with the Teltonica it has, that yeah. uh, they're going to put together a package that will have the Teltonica router, um, this e-point, perhaps Ethernet cable, perhaps even because now you need a Wi-Fi router inside. Yep. What is nice, you will have an outdoor 
um, hot spot. Yeah. So if you have people walking on outdoor, that will be just naturally catering for them. But I would recommend that you have still your uh, Wi-Fi inside the building because this Wi-Fi would not be the best to reach it. Absolutely. And I'm excited. Yeah. We're yeah, going to launch it most probably yeah. in a, uh, within two months here. Yeah. And, uh, so we'll put some to kits together and, and see how we go with that. I, really uh, yeah, the, I, I think the whole idea of antenna enclosures is a really good one. And, and things think change, you know, people are, are used to the old ones. That's why we actually, uh, and I think people must remember, it still uses the, the antennas, uh, they all may be trust and it's been described, Indeed, like yeah. the Expo 1 and Expo 2. Yeah. But it gives you this advantage and life is going to change and I think that's going to become the much better way yeah. of doing it in time. I think it will be really good, so it's been good. But thanks a lot. Well, thank um, you for and coming. That's why, it's been and lovely that's why to we're going to launch the kit uh, yeah. also with Solwas. They're ideal because they can uh, sell it in a kit form and also explain to people yeah. why this is a good idea. Well, whilst we've got you, um, well, the products is, are, are all good and obviously we've been selling for 10 thank years. You. But yeah. um, I just wonder if we could ask a, a few more questions about you. I mean, you know, yeah, how, how did pointing come to be and, and what did you do before? I, I was actually a, a lecturer and a professor at the university always pretty entrepreneurial even at that time because you have to arrange uh, work and we were starting to do private work but I had a very nice research group we published over a hundred academic papers wow. so I think that is one of the differences with us and many other companies the sense that myself and I took over the research group are really hardcore antenna engineers yeah. which is why we often struggle to promote our own stuff because engineers are not good at speaking to no, people. No, well, they're not salespeople, are they? Oh, there's yeah. two species. Yeah, there's, yeah. Uh, there's humans and engineers. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so we, need, yeah, we, we need humans, but that's the origin. So we had a research group from university that actually went out and said we want to make antennas in South Africa. Both of those words was quite, uh, people said, how can earth can you do consumer antennas in South Africa? Yeah. But I think a lot of our European partners I've said they're amazed, they don't know how, but uh, some of the best antennas seem to come from uh, um, South Africa. Well, absolutely. Companies. And, and then we, when we first joined with you, we used to get them from South Africa. Obviously, it's all Correct. European based now, but yes. uh, yeah, so it's they, they have been a very good product range for us. And certainly since the pandemic, much of what we did before. Has, uh, has gone by the wayside and so with people working from home, oh, yeah, um, yeah. holidaying in their own country. So it's that sort of thing that has improved the sales for us, certainly in the last two years. Two years. So, yeah. And I think there's, there used to be um, uh, data on, on, on mobile networks was like a secondary thing. Yeah. Whereas now it's perceived um, to be one of the ways if you can't get to people with fiber, um, even the, the actual network operators yeah. recognize they can't get there. They're now offering packages and so forth. So it used to be expensive. Yeah. Now they're offering sort of packages, monthly yeah, packages. That's um, right. which yeah. It's become sense. a utility that is a requirement. And, 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 and as we've learned in the last two years, people can work anywhere. Um, well, depending on your job, obviously, but in the main, people can work. By the way, um, Louis, for us, it's been a wonderful, uh, because somehow in the UK, that idea took up a long time ago. But I. Uh, I virtually based my company. People at least initially said to me, how can you make antennas like this for a cell phone? Oh, so that's what it seemed like. Yeah. And we foresaw that this is going to happen, but it took actually longer. And uh, we've, we've really had a massive increase where this is now becoming not even mainstream, yeah. but it's becoming well known. Yeah. And, and certainly it's a company like, you, like yours that, that made it happen because I could only see the tendency I could sell yeah. to people. So well, that's fantastic. it. And that's why it makes a good partnership, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. if we all have our own skills. I, <laughs> I couldn't make an antenna. And I, for me, it looks like a bit of wire. <laughs> <laughs> it is just do a bit do of you wire. have a favourite antenna in your range or one that you've created over the years? Look, the, uh, you'll see that on, on our YouTube channel, I actually discussed the Expo just because we've gone through three stages and the last stage is truly advanced so if you ever see another antenna offering that range of frequencies yeah uh, we could we've opened some and you can say that's not an antenna this is antenna it's got a sculpted elements for each frequency so uh, it, uh, it governs the band that's so that's a antenna I'm extremely proud of we've like I say taking yeah. it through three levels the other one which is not that well known in the UK is, is, is a lock periodic antenna yeah. for 20 years and still one of the mainstay that will be the 0092 92. Yeah. and we're now going to get a 94 right. which is beautiful so I love that because it's been with us for a very long time yeah that, I think that that is probably the first antenna we ever supplied of yours oh is it I so think so you're actual actual oh yeah we still sell it I didn't yeah, yeah. that oh. would you try again Blooming Siri. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, and that. I'm still not sure about that. 
Shut Let's up. wait for a second. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, those antennas certainly, if, if people are on real bad signal, they are phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, they don't seem to have much more gain than the XPOL2. But what I always say to people, remember that one at the low frequency was no antenna has got the same gain all over the band from 900 to whatever it's nowadays, almost yeah. 3 gigabit, gigahertz. And that one at 600, uh, 6, 7, 8, 900 yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. And if you're far away from a cell phone tower, that's the frequency. The people use. that take it, n we never get those back. And we don't get much shit back in the way of your product, but we definitely never get never those get back. Those. Yeah, it is a really yeah, good so, answer. So they're locked in Australia, for example, who's got big stretches of land. Uh, we saw, uh, I mean, literally thousands. Yeah, uh, I can uh, imagine. Uh, uh, yeah, close to 10,000. Uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So, or maybe uh, I'll move to Australia then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, few antennas, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you still sell after 18 years, you know, a, a lifetime that I never would have expected. Yeah. So we're looking forward to all the new products that you've got coming through, but what about you? Are you staying with the company? Or are you going to retire? Are you, um, will you uh, ever retire? Uh, someone actually mentioned this to me. It was almost like shocking because I realized I must probably pass the age. My father retired, and I've never even thought about it. I'm, I must say, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. To me, uh, uh, work is never. I've, I've, it's not a job. Uh, it's is not it? a job. It's a so I will life, never yeah. retire. I have moved myself out of because I'm actually not a good manager. I realized. So I've moved myself where I look for new products, new ideas, and the company's general vision. Yeah. And I've appointed very capable people to actually run uh, the business, which I think works very well. Well. That's what Richard Brunson said, who the uh, entrepreneur here, and he said that uh, if you employ people that are smarter than you, your company will succeed. He speaks straight from my heart. Indeed, yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our podcast. And, thank you uh, very much. It's been great to meet you all, uh, the whole team of you that have come. And I hope I, you I enjoyed really, your fish and chips last uh, night. Fish and chips was fantastic. Yeah. But uh, meeting the people personally, it makes such a difference. Before it was just a name yeah. and perhaps a website. Yeah. It's lovely to, to meet you, Louise, and, and uh, the, same the guy, other two yeah. partners. Um, it's been a great It's honor. been lovely to have you here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching or thank you for listening, whichever you chose to do. Uh, if you normally listen, by all means, come and have a look at us over on YouTube if you want to scare yourselves. If not, just find us wherever you get your normal podcast from. Thank you very much. See you next month.